So what we're doing here is we're learning questions that could be asked during an interview for uh, becoming a Go developer, a Go programmer, a Go software engineer. So if you're looking for one of those positions, we're going through all of these questions here. There's a bunch of them with different answers. And if you're an organization or a business and you need to interview potential Go developers, programmers, software engineers, you can use these questions to uh, develop you know, whatever questions you wanna ask in the interview. You could find all these questions at the GitHub uh, user goes to 11, that's me, and learn to code Go version three. And this is the repo for my course, Learn to Code Google's Go programming language. You can see that here on Udemy, Todd McLeod, the Go programming language. And in here, anything with a number greater than zero is code used in the course. And I'll put a link to the course outline with links to all of the code running in the Go playground down below, because I know there's a tremendous amount of people in the world who are learning Go. And uh, so you can check that out, it could totally help you. And then anything with the triple zero prefix is uh, you know stuff I'm just building or working upon to put together examples. And here are those interview questions right there. So you can get to all those interview questions there. And in this video, what we're gonna take a look at is we're gonna take a look at, uh, what are we taking a look at? Let's find the question. So the question we're gonna take a look at is what are pointers, show us pointers work at work in code. And, uh, and this is also going to lead me to show you something that's, uh, maybe I'll save this for the next video. I'll save this for the next video. All right, so let's take a look at what pointers are. So pointers point towards an address uh, in memory, right? It's a memory address. And, uh, and that's where a value is stored and the value stored at that address is going to be of a certain type. And so to see that in code, we could just start out with, let me just find a, a blank uh, one that we could work with here. We could, we could declare some variable. So let's say I have some variable colon equal is equal to 42, and I could print that variable out. And so there's that variable that's gonna print out that variable, but I could also print out the address of that variable. And so that's how I see the address of the variable. So if I run this code here, we're at 07 live 02, so let me go there, CD uh, up one level, and I need to see where am I on that, and I need to be at uh, BM 07 live. So go up one more and then 07 and then 02 and I need it to be just 02 like that, CD 02 like that and print working directory. I'm in 02 LS go run main.go. There we go. So there's my value and there's my address. And then once I've taken an address of something, I could dereference that address. So let me just bring that down to one more line. I could dereference that address like this and do that one more time and it's going to give me the value once again. So the ampersand gives you the address and this asterisk operator right there dereferences it. And if we look to see what is the type of something when it's like got the address, we could do a print F and then like this and then like that. And we could say, you know, percent P to see that address and we could also do a percent T to see that type. And so I'm just gonna bring that over and control save it and then run this once more. And you can see here that that is a pointer to an int, right? And let me do a little new line after that so we don't have the 42 at the end of it. And we'll do this once more. So it's a pointer to an int and that is the address. And so that's the type is it's a pointer to an int. And this pointer right here is part of the type. That little asterisk right there is part of the type. And this asterisk right here is an operator which dereferences an address to show the value at that address. So that is like, you know, the first thing to know about how addresses work. And then there's something that's interesting to see with a for range loop and it's good to know about. And we'll talk about this in the next video, but I'll just introduce it here. And so if we have a list of values, so let's say we have some sports, I'm actually just gonna copy these values from uh, right here because I already have it all set up. So control C and I'm gonna come in here and I'll just put that right there. And so we have all those sports, and now I wanna range over this, so for index value colon equal range, and uh, I'm gonna print this out, I'm gonna font print F, and I wanna see both the address, and we'll start with the value, both the value and then also the address for one of the items that we're gonna see here in a second, and I'll do a, 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 I need to put those in quotes, I'll do a tab between those, and uh, so we'll have here, we're going to have, first of all, we'll have, I guess, our value and then our value. And this is going to be the address of that value right there. And then we'll duplicate this here. And this is what's interesting and good to know about and then have a new line break after that. And here, what we're going to take a look at, the value that we're gonna see is sports 
i, and so we'll see the, the value at that index location, and then we'll also see the address of that value, sports i. So this is just interesting to look at. And so when we run this code now, so let me clear all this out. Uh, expected something, what did I leave out? So we've got um, quotes from here to there, and we've got four, one, two, three, four, and here we have an error and expected some sort of an ending bracket. We've got ending brackets there, we've got ending brackets there, and we have our, our oh, we need uh, right here, we've got that in four range. Here we go, ready? Sports. <laughs> Maybe you already saw that. All right, let's run it again, clear. So there we go. So I uh, printed out all that stuff up above for the first time. And then this is uh, interesting right here. So as we access things in the index position, you can see that we're accessing different memory locations, right? So as we say sports, sports in index position zero, sports in index position one and two and three, uh, we have those different memory addresses right there. So we're seeing memory addresses. But the memory addresses for this are all the same. And the reason those memory addresses are, are the same is because uh, when we range over sports, every time we get a value out of this slice, it's being assigned to V. So for each iteration of the loop, it's being assigned to V. And the value stored at each iteration of the loop, the value stored at that address, there this is the value that's stored at that address, those values change in each iteration of the loop, but it's all being stored in the same address versus when we access things over here like that, we're accessing them, um, you know, into like our slice. We're saying, give me, the, give me the value in that slice at that position, which brings up some interesting considerations, which we're gonna explore in the next video. But in this video, the main thing, the main question that we're answering is what are pointers and show us pointers that work in code. And so pointers point to a memory address location. My linting here is telling me this could be simplified to just X, <laughs> right? But pointers point to memory uh, address and location where a value is stored of a certain type. And, uh, and so that's the main thing that we saw right here. And then we also started to see all of this right here. And we've put up some interesting food for thought based upon what's going on in this loop, which we're gonna explore in the next video. All right, that's my solution for this exercise. If you have any thoughts or comments, please contribute those down below in the comments so that we could all learn, including myself. I'm always, always learning. And include a link to any code in the Golang Playground so that we could easily look at your code if you have any suggestions or ideas or comments about this that includes code. Include that link to that code in the Golang Playground so we could all check it out. All right, that's it for this video. See you in the next video where we're gonna explore. Let me just give you a preview of it. So here you can take a look at that code, right? And this is the interesting part right there. And, uh, and when I run this code, so I need to go to 0101. And so I'm just gonna CD up two levels and then 01 and 01. And, uh, and I just want that one like that. And just make sure there's something there and go run main. Let me clear this first so we can just have those and go run main.go. Here's the interesting thing we'll explore in the next video. Right, but check this out. So right at the beginning of the loop, I'm changing this before I print V, right? I'm changing it to biking, but then when I print V, I'm still getting this, right? And then when I finally exit that and I come down here and print sports, I get all that. So we're gonna explore that in the next video and that's something that's good to know about. See you in the next video. Hit like and subscribe so you'll be notified when that video comes out. There's also a link to all the, all the videos in this playlist. There's a link to the playlist in the description down below. So if you want to watch all these videos on Go Programming Language Interview Questions, you can click that link. See you in the next video.